Well, hold on one second. Okay, here we go. All right, we bring in a very familiar face now. She's Jessica Schultz, former Sooner, also the National Director of Scouting for Perfect Game Softball. No big deal there. Jessica, uh, thanks as always. What's been going on with you? Are you uh, are you out on the West Coast these days? I am. I am. Yeah, we're doing good. We actually live in Palo Alto, California now. Um, my husband is the head strength coach for football at Stanford. So we're out on the wow. West Coast. We are enjoying the California rain. You know, <laughs> you know yeah. the weather has been a little bit iffy, but no, we are we are out here uh, working for Perfect Game. We have an eight month old daughter. Um, so yeah, everything's been great. Wow, that's cool. Well, how are things going at Perfect Game? Things are going good. Yeah, we have some running some tournaments in the Midwest area, Iowa and Kansas City. We um, are releasing some rankings. Um, our next rankings will be out in August for the 2025 class. So, you know, just really trying to help grow the sport in the youth level and just trying to get some kids, you know, um, some more eyes on them to help with their, um, you know, process of getting to the next level. Well, you just mentioned everything you have going on, right? Um, yeah. You're a mom now, you're a wife, you, you've got this job with Perfect Game Softball. And I know you got a busy lifestyle, but I got to ask, like, does Texas Week still do anything to you? Because oh I, I know like me and the fans out there like, all right, it's Texas week. It's a little bit different this week. So I know you're out there on the West Coast, but do you still get those those uh, those old feelings you used to have? One thousand percent. I mean, <laughs> we've got a group text going. I wish I could be out there for it. I've got my daughter's outfits lined up for every day this weekend. No, but to me, it's such a it's such a great rivalry. It's such a great series. Um, I feel like no matter what. Each team is ranked every year. It's just something different when you play that series because everyone wants to win. There's just such a deep-rooted history there. So, no, you'll definitely see me posting it's 10 a.m. and Texas still sucks starting <laughs> on Friday. So <laughs> uh, She still got it, everyone. She still got it. I love that. Well, I I'm curious. When you were at OU from 2010 to 2013, did you and the rest of the team, did you consider – at that time, Texas as your biggest rival? Was it Oklahoma State? Was it someone else in the Big 12? I'm, I'm curious if you viewed anyone as your biggest rival. Was it UT? 1,000% Texas. They had such a great lineup back then as well with Blair Luna on the mound. Mm -hmm. They had Taylor Hoagland, Nadia Taylor, just some huge names coming out of that school. Um, and you know what? It was always between us and them to you know, um, impact who was going to be the conference champion. So it really did come down to that weekend back then of who was going to be conference champions. Um, my freshman year, they took it. Sophomore year, we it was just always a battle back and forth with Texas. And um, they were just – were I'm great friends with all those girls now, but back then it was like, oh, you just – it was such a battle. You couldn't stand playing Texas. <laughs> well, I guess the most important part is uh, I think you had a winning record against them, but you also won your final game against Texas, right? Was that the uh, game in Oklahoma City? Yes, yes, we did. We beat them. It was a run rule in Oklahoma City, but that year was even a battle with them at Texas. Um, you know, we had to use both Kehlani and Michelle coming in together tag team. Mm -hmm. So it was just always such a great rivalry that everyone played. I feel like another level because you wanted that game so bad and the crowd was there. I mean, that was the biggest game of the year crowd wise. It was just, it was such a fun atmosphere to play in because it is such a rooted history. Yeah. Championship series last year. We got a top 10 matchup once again this year. Uh, OU's 31 games in, and they're playing some good softball, Jessica. What have been your overall impressions, your big takeaway from this team so far through 31 games? I think the biggest take – I mean, obviously, they're, they're great. I think the biggest takeaway was watching how they bounced back after the Baylor loss. I feel like you yeah. saw them go to another gear where they were good starting the first couple weeks, but you just felt like their bats weren't there yet. You know, they were trying to figure out some stuff on the mound as a staff. But after that Baylor loss, you just saw them really lock in and take their game to another level, which I feel like Coach Gassel always gets those girls to do after a really – you know, important learning loss. But no, I really feel that you're seeing the the staff on the mound gel. You're seeing um, May come alive and really produce some big wins for them. You're seeing Jordy Ball. You're seeing Sirocco. They're, they really do have a staff on the mound this year and everyone's doing their part. And then offensively, I feel like you're getting some big 
big at bats from the freshman. I really yeah. love Erickson's swing. I think she's just got a beautiful. That's so swing. natural. I mean, it's so like natural. the prettiest swing on the oh team. Gosh, it is so pretty to watch. I'm like, I have not seen such a pretty swing like that in a while. <laughs> so I just, I feel like they really do have some great senior leadership, but you're also seeing these young ones step up as well. You know, you mentioned what OU has in the circle, but then you also mentioned uh, Rick, uh, Kalani Ricketts and Michelle Gascoigne. Now, I consider yeah. that one-two duo the best in school history. Some can argue with another, but I'm going to have a pretty good claim to that. However, have you that. seen – yeah, oh, I'm sure that you would. <laughs> have you ever seen an OU team or, I mean, really, Jessica, a team in softball, period, that's had three legitimate options like OU has this year? Because that's what they have to me, three – legitimate like all american type of pitchers 1000 percent. i don't think there's another team in the country that has that just because you've watched them play against the uclas now that do have good um you know a good bullpen as well but you watched kind of oklahoma just run through that bullpen in that game early on in mary nutter so i really do believe that one oklahoma has the best staff on the mound and two, you can just tell that they all support each other. They all want each other to have the ball. They all want to like they all want each other to do good. And I think that's something really special because sometimes pitchers can want the ball a little bit more um, yeah. because they want that, you know, they want that win. But I really do feel like as a staff, they're all rooting for each other and really, you know, locked into the game that they're getting. You're the perfect person to ask to answer this next question because you have managed a staff as a catcher. So let's say that you're the catcher of this team. And a lot of times when I look at an experienced catcher that's played a lot of softball, I normally think, you know, that's probably the leader of that entire team. So if, if you're if you're the catcher right now of this team, how are you managing this staff? I mean, you don't need to come out there every other pitch and tell them to calm down. Like, they've been through it. They, they've, they've seen their fair share of innings. How are you, though, as an experienced catch, uh, catcher, managing these three pitchers at this point? Yeah, no, absolutely. I do feel like that these girls are very different where they're all locked in. They're all watching film. They're all studying before the game. So I think managing them would just be, you know, really feeling what energy they needed at that time. I feel like Jordy Ball is a fireball on the mound where she's going to produce a lot of energy. So maybe being a little bit more of a calmer presence because she's going to be that fire that you're needing. Yeah. I feel like Sirocco, you're feeling that from her as well on the mound where she's bringing that fire as she's jumping off the mound after a big strikeout where May is a little bit more of that cool and calm and collected presence on the mound. So maybe with May, I would bring a little bit more energy, but I just think it's feeling the pitchers out and really feeling what energy they need in that given moment. I don't think you need to go out every pitch because I really do believe they do their homework and really do a good job studying each team that and an opponent that they're playing. So, um, yeah, I know. I just, I feel like it's adding energy that's needed when needed, um, when things get a little bit, you know, out of whack, but no, I think that Kenzie Hansen does a phenomenal job, mm -hmm. um, with those pitchers and, you know, managing personalities and managing energy that they need. So, um, I think that's the main thing. What impresses you the most about her? Because when she's hot, I mean, she's on and I think, probably the best catcher in all of college softball this year. What do you like about her the most? I think for me, it's, it's her presence behind the plate. I mean, she's got a great arm. She's got a great bat, but like I said, it's the leadership that you kind of talked about. It's that leadership that she brings behind the plate. She does give me a little bit more of that calmer presence, which I think those pitchers, you know, when you've got that, those high energy pitchers, I think they really relate well to. And so I, I really do enjoy watching Kenzie behind the plate just because she is so smooth with everything she does. She is so relaxed, but also brings that energy when needed. Yeah, I, I mean, she's it, who the leader is on this team. I'm, I'm sure there's several options, but I wouldn't be shocked at all if it's if it's Kinsey Hanson. You know who else I like? And I basically did half of an episode on Sunday about her. If this team had a home run derby, Jessica, which mm -hmm. I would pay money for that. A lot of people Same. would. <laughs> I'd be, I, I feel like it might be Sophia Nugent. I think oh she's gosh. had the two hardest hit balls of the year. She almost knocked down the scoreboard at Iowa State on uh, Saturday out there in left center field. But, God, it's like, okay, you've got Kinsey Hansen. She might yeah. be the best catcher. But I guess this is the case for every single position. 
if Kinsey's not available or you want to mix things up or a little bit, give her a rest. Okay, we'll just throw in someone who's been hitting some absolute moonshots this year. 1,000%. I'm so glad you brought her up because literally she's been a topic in our group text of alumni. Just like she has just been a spark for them too. And like you said, she has got a bat. Like she came in early this season, you know, when Kenzie wasn't able to play those first couple weeks and you really didn't feel like you missed a beat with her. She has been phenomenal behind the plate at the plate um, and just has a powerful swing. It's been really fun to watch her um, get some at bats and get some innings in this lineup because I, I really have enjoyed her watching her play and watching her presence and being able to step into that role when, you know, you, you have such amazing players and being able to come off the bench like that game one and, you know, set a presence behind the plate. Um, Sophia did an amazing job. Yeah. You know, last Sunday I talked about OU. I mean, they've packed stadiums on the West Coast this year. Mm -hmm. They've packed stadiums in the Midwest. They've packed stadiums in the South. And, and I had the take that, look, the game of softball is growing like crazy, which is awesome. But I'd argue that no one has really helped fuel that growth quite like OU softball. So when you see the incredible supports and the incredible momentum that this program has right now, and it's bringing it to the West Coast, it's bringing it to Mississippi State, Iowa State, they're getting record crowds at these places. How does that make you feel as an alum? It just makes you feel that, you know, the game is growing in the right direction. And, you know, you, you see these kids now are being, you know, seen as celebrities for these younger generations. And it's really exciting to see you know, not just Oklahoma, but for the sport. But I feel like, like you said, Oklahoma has been the driving force of that. And it's just, it's fun to see, you know, them now putting the money into Love Field and doing all that for the university because Coach Gasso has, you know, poured her heart into that program for the last 25 years to just see the, you know, um, that she's getting, you know, the return with the new field and with those fans. It's just, it's fun to watch. It's fun as an alumni to, you know, know that you were a part of that development for the program. Yeah, and I think they've helped fuel the sport, not just because how much they've won or the yeah. stars that they've had, but Jessica, you go to a game and oh they're going to they're gonna stay after and sign autographs. Like, yes. well, I mean, what that program is about, what they've done, how they've helped fuel that, because, you know, Iowa State had a record crowd on Saturday. And mm -hmm. no offense to the Cyclones, but I'm sure most people there were to see OU. So they see yeah. OU, they they put on a show in front of everyone, and then they're going to sign autographs after. It's just what what Patty has turned not turned this program into, but how she's kind of represented the game is just I don't know. I I continue to be amazed about it. I agree. I feel like she does it the right way. She, you know, like you said, like they're always going to sign autographs because she truly believes it's giving back to that next generation and really being bigger than the game. So um, she's always, like you said, always done it the right way. So to see the success they have, I think is just the icing on the cake for her because she's really wanting to just have these girls come in and leave as women and be able to go out in the world. And so I think softball is just such a small piece of it for her. And so to watch the success is just, it's awesome. You know, it is Texas week and we talked about the horns, but going back to another rival, I, I, anything could happen in the postseason, Jessica, but we may have Bedlam in the championship series oh my this year gosh. for the first time. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I've been watching a lot of Oklahoma State softball too, and they, they really do have it as well. I just, you know, that I think that is the new to me you know, second rivalry. I mean, obviously Oklahoma and Oklahoma State have always had a rivalry, but now it's like a rivalry because it's so competitive between that rivalry. And they, I, I think Kenny's done a great job with that program, but no, I, I think that we might have that for the first time ever. I was literally just thinking that last week, but obviously I'm pulling for Oklahoma, but you know, I think yeah. it's going to be a good yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, hey, regardless of who's in the championship series, I mean, I think OU's going to be in the championship series. Whoever is okay. there with them, I know the former alums are uh, going to oh, be yeah. hanging out in the park. I, I, I mean, we see that so much every single year, and you've been a part of that. I'm wondering who, like, the real life of the party is over there during these games. <laughs> I would like to say I'm the real life of the party. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I would say, I know, it's, it's just so, so fun to – we all kind of wait for that at the end of the year. And it's it's more fun now because as these girls start to graduate from Oklahoma, I think they're excited to be a part of the alumni group that goes and supports the Sooners. So to watch that process grow too, you know, now we have CC 
um, Clifton, we've got yep. Nicole Mendez in our group. And it's like, they're all excited to be a part of the alumni supporting Oklahoma softball. And I think that just shows to how great coach Gasso has done um, of, you know, keeping her alumni um, support. So you know, strong is you're going to get all these girls that are wanting to fly in and support you because of the, you know, relationships that we have had with coach Gasso. Do you have a favorite player on this year's team? Someone on that maybe you, you like to pay attention to more than anyone else? Jordan Ball. I mean, Jordan yeah. Ball is just, <laughs> just so fun to watch. Oh, my gosh. She does it all. Like, she, I think I saw her the first or one of the first games hit a ground ball to the shortstop and she beat it out. I'm just like, yep. so that girl, she's just so – everything she does – is at an, such a high level that I just, you can't not love watching Jordy play. It's so fun. Yeah. Last one I have for you. OU's 30 and one. You mentioned it. They're, they really just started to stack really good performances together after that Baylor game. They've won 22 straight. We know mm -hmm. what the expectations are. We know what the pressures are with this team. We know all that. Um, though they are playing good softball right now, what do you think Patty is telling this team? You know, I think that she's just wanting more, you know, continuing to build off what they've done. I think that she would tell you that they're not settled yet. They're not hitting their peak yet. I think she would say that, that they're still, you know, working to get to that level. Um, but I just, I think that she understands the magnitude of this rivalry. And I think her players are ready. They go in, they, you know, they, they study uh, the week prior, but I just, I think she would tell you that they still haven't hit their peak yet and they're still progressing. And that's what you want when you're in, you know, early April is to continue to build off those big wins. And I think this is going to be a big test for them going into a rival weekend weekend and, you know, testing themselves a little bit after, you know, 22 wins and, you know, Texas is scrappy and they want everything, yeah. any piece of Oklahoma that they can get. So I think that's probably what she's going in this weekend saying. Oh, I just I just thought of this. Are you ready for the 9 a.m. local start time for the game on Sunday? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love a good early morning. That's why I love being on the West Coast, because you don't have to wait all day for these games to get started. They start early. You get to get your softball in. So now I'm, we're ready. That's awesome. You're incredible, Jessica. Thank you so much, as always. No, thank you. Okay, seriously, thank you again. I appreciate you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this.